Hello everyone, my name is Chris Healy. I work at Alliance Manchester Business School. I'm responsible for recruitment and marketing across our suite of MBA programmes, of which we have a full-time MBA where we look to recruit about 100, 110 of some of the best MBA applicants from around the world at any given year. Uh, we also have a suite of professional MBA programmes. So for example, our global MBA, um, has been around for a number of years where we recruit about six to 700 students. Uh, then we also have a global executive MBA that was recently launched in 2022. And we also have a number of partnership MBAs with, for example, the likes of the Kelly School of Business in the US and um, Tomji University in China. I think the first question to ask yourself is, can you do, can you do a full-time MBA or are you going to continue to work full-time? I, I always believe that that should be a fairly easy decision because you yourself know in your heart of hearts what your current situation is whether it be from a from a professional perspective whether it be from a personal perspective so you'll be able to know the level of commitment that you can that you can make a full-time mba does require more commitment there's no doubt about that on the other hand of course professional mba programs you have to wait you have to balance your job um your studies and your family life as well there's so many options available. You know, full-time MBA does exactly what it says on the tin. It's very, very easy to understand. But when it comes to professional MBA programs and continuing to work full-time while studying, I, I, I think it's a minefield. And the reason I say that is because of the amount of options that are available on the market. So I can, you know, I'll, 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 I'll quickly, quickly run through them all. So let's take online MBAs. As a, as, as, as a starting point. There's been such uh, a huge amount of growth in online MBAs. And that was the case um, before the pandemic. And of course, it's, be, it, it, it's grown even more since the pandemic. Now an online MBA has so many advantages. You can, you can take it from anywhere in the world. Uh, you don't have to travel and it can all be done online. So a very, popular and convenient uh, method of studying for an MBA in 2022 and beyond. Of course, one of the disadvantages of a purely online MBA is you do miss out on that face-to-face -face contact. So again, it's up to that individual to, to balance it out in terms of, yes, there's advantages in online, but the disadvantage of not having the face-to-face. Then you have um, what you would call, um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe modular MBAs or, or, or distance MBAs, where you might have a, a week residential at the start of the program and maybe a week residential at the end of the program. So again, you know, uh, a large amount of online study, but it's mixed with some mixed with some face-to-face -face contact. Um, in terms of what we do at Manchester, what we have is more of a blended program. So yes, there's online, um, but you also come on campus three times per year for one week blocks. And then if you move to, and if, and if we continue with this face-to-face -face element, a very traditional uh, program would be your uh, traditional part-time MBA. And, you know, we used to have one of those at Manchester. And I think and I think a lot of schools would probably use it in a past tense because I think they are gay, they are less popular now. And the reason I say that is because part time evening weekend MBAs mean, you know, if, you, if, it, if it's an evening MBA, that means you're attending class, what, two, three hours on a Tuesday evening, two, three hours on a Thursday evening. That means you and it was certainly the case in Manchester, but I think it would be the case anywhere in the world, whether you're a business school in San Francisco, in LA, in uh, I, I can go more from California as well, Nigeria to, uh, to Munich in Germany, you would be only recruiting local students. 
And I think these days, what I'm seeing from MBA students is they really want to be in a big global cohort. They don't want to just be with students um, or professionals from that specific city that they work in. So again, advantages and disadvantages. And then finally, you have executive MBA programs. Uh, executive MBAs, I think, are, are great and the things that you need to consider. Uh, the face-to-face -face element, 60, 70, 80, up to 90 days on many of the top uh, Ember programs around the world. Also, of course, it comes with a significant cost. So what I say to people is, if you can commit to, I don't know, 70 days out of the office in an 18-month period, uh, and that works for you professionally and personally, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a genuine believer that an Ember program is a great route to go down. The reality is how many people can commit to that amount of time out of the office, along with uh, the huge, the huge program fees. So all these things need to be taken into account. You know, I've, I've spoken there about what five MBAs very, very quickly, and there will be people who are perfectly suited for 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 one of those five. It doesn't mean you have to be perfectly perfectly suited for every single one because that's not going to be the case because they are very different. If I go back to when I started in this industry, people would always say, oh, there's a, there's a specific executive MBA, Max. There's a, there's a specific executive MBA type of student. Um, and that it would be different to a blended student or an online student. And I just don't think that's the, I just don't think that's the case anymore. Let's, um, you know, look at the Manchester program. So, you know, we, you know, we recruit, as I said, about six to 700 students. So you've got a big sample size here. The average age of our students is 36. Look at the top Ember programs in the world. Average age, 35, 36, 37 very 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 similar um and i think on the part-time programs or traditional part-time programs you maybe had uh perhaps a younger demographic but again though that younger demographic that also was previously looking at full-time mbas they are also now looking more and more at the wealth of professional mba options that are available to them Price, yeah, uh, it's it, it, it's it's an important question. Um, again, in the professional MBA market, there was a stage a number of years ago where your employer would often fund your MBA, and uh, depending on who your employer was, you know, sometimes maybe the price didn't matter, so it was uh, one less problem to think about. Now. It's very, very different. Uh, I was reading something in the Financial Times um, recently, and it said, you know, many programs are now between 10 to 20 percent of their students, of the students, are company funded. Um, I'm pleased to say we're still at around 40 percent at Manchester. But again, a reason for that could actually be the price as well. Um, you know, you, you look at some online MBAs now in the US, easily over a hundred thousand um, dollars um, and then in terms of the top ember programs again you could you could you you could easily get to uh you know a hundred hundred thousand euro on some of the some some of the best ones so what i would say as as i would with any mba program whether we're talking about full-time or, or or professional you need to think what your what your budget is uh i mean a trick that some people do I hear time and time again, and it makes complete sense. They'll look at something like the Financial Times MBA rankings, and they will they'll, they'll they'll have the ranking on one side, and they'll have the price on the other side, and that gives them again, uh, you know, a gauge as to um, as to w what is potentially available to them or not. I think you know we're fortunate at Manchester because of the sheer size of the school. Um, you hear now of so many disruptive online MBAs that are coming onto the market from uh, from the US, also a couple starting in Europe with a very with a relatively low price point. 
So we're pleased to say in Manchester, we've always been able to keep that price rel relatively low. And one of the reasons for that is because we are such a global school and we already recruit such a big, a large amount of students. So it's not like our class is only, you know, we've only got 45 students, therefore we need to charge uh, a significant premium. So we've been, relative to our ranking, we've been able to keep that price at a fairly, fairly low, low level that is, you know, quite, I suppose, suppose equivalent to many of these online MBA disruptors that are around at the moment. I think the brand is important. Of course it is. You know, an MBA is uh, one of those things that you'll only do once in your life. So it is, uh, it is important to get, to, to get it right. And that brand is going to stay with you. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of merit in going with a reputable business school that have uh, a number of years of experience of offering MBA programs. So that would be that would be that would be one thing. What I would say is when it comes to MBA, when it comes to MBA applicants, everyone tends to um, almost have very similar brands that they're looking at or very very similarly ranked uh, business schools as an example very rarely are you going to see one person um, one person looking at the school as ranked fifth in the world and also looking at the school as ranked 95th in the world it generally doesn't happen so you know you might have someone who's looking at a school who's that's ranked I don't know 25 in the world 30th in the world 35th in the world and for me there's no there's not going to be much difference there in terms of the brand of the school that's 25 30 35 uh what I think is more important if you're you know what I think is more important is looking at that structure of the program so let's say you've got an idea in terms of the format uh you maybe want let's say uh, an MBA that's got an online element, but you also want some face-to-face -face contact. Then you need to then delve into the detail. Well, so, so some of the things that you might look at is, how often do I need to come on campus? Is it more convenient for me just to come on campus twice over the programme? Or is it more convenient for me, or am I gonna benefit more from coming on campus maybe six times in two years? And then, you know, you, you can also look at things such as, specializations or electives as some people call them uh, a lot of schools will allow you to take your electives purely online we will we, we'll offer that to you at manchester but we'll also allow you to come and attend your electives face to face uh, some schools will say yes you can attend electives face to face but it'll cost you additional fees um, so again you need to delve into the detail i'm going to assume that you're already looking at schools with a similar brand or of a similar quality. So if you are, if you're already doing that, you should have confidence in that, you know, three, four, five schools that you're looking at. That's when you then need to go into the detail, in my opinion. So in terms of, uh, you know, the Alliance Manchester Business School brand, for example, I think there's a, there's a, there's a couple of things that I think we would be known for um, one is our one is our Manchester method so the Manchester what the Manchester method is it is a practice based approach to learning we want people to actually apply what they learn in the classroom uh, in in real life settings so whether that be on live consultancy projects while they're on the MBA or whether that be in their day-to-day -day job uh, literally the next day after they've, uh, they've they've gotten home from a from an MBA workshop on let's say our global MBA or global executive MBA, um, and then secondly, you know I, I mentioned earlier how important it is for MBA students now to really have a a global presence or a global feel in their MBA program, and that's one of the things that you know we've that we've grown so much on over the last 50 years. Um, we've now got campuses in Dubai, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Shanghai, where our MBA uh, is, is, is also delivered. So we have students, when you combine all of our students from around 90 countries, 
at any one stage on the MBA programme. And we allow our students to take classes in these different locations if they choose to do so. So it's so it's so it's full flexibility, which is great because for some people they'll just want to uh, maybe attend classes in the UK or they may only want to attend classes in Singapore. And if that's what they want, then that works for them. But equally, you're going to have a lot of global citizens that want an element of the UK, that want an element of the Middle East, that want an element of Asia. I think one of the things that you will find on professional MBA programmes is the admissions criteria can often be different to a full time. So, for uh, you know, an, an, an obvious example is, let's say our full time MBA and also I say our, but I can go as far to say many of my colleagues in Europe and around the world would be the same at their respective schools. A GMAT is just required. It's, it, it, it's mandatory. It's one of those things that's needed to gain admissions on a full time MBA. On professional MBA programs, schools can often be a bit more relaxed about that. And the reason for that is because of the type of applicants who's applying, that they are generally, you know, I said to you earlier, average age 36. So they, they've got significant experience. Um, they've also got management experience. They're in senior roles, they're in good roles. So that mean negates perhaps the reason of needing a GMAT. Um, so that would be one way where schools have almost removed removed barriers. Um, but I would still say, you know, when it comes to things like, you know, references, um, you know, looking at someone's background. So for, for, for us on our professional MBA programmes, we need to be sure that they have the right level of experience because when you're going into class, you're not going into a lecture where you're just writing notes for four or five hours a day. You're going into small classes. Although we have a huge amount of students, you're actually only in a classroom with about 25 to 30 other students at any one time. And they are highly, highly interactive. One of the things that we think is extremely important is that our students don't just learn from our academics, but they actually learn from each other. So we need to be confident that the people who we admit onto our programmes, that they are going to benefit the other students in that classroom as well, and that they are not going to be out of their depth.